All right, this video is about how to make transformations of the cosecant and the secant graphs. All right, so keep your pink notes handy as we look at the parent functions and what the things that are going to change about it given any equation, okay? A is my amplitude. It's going to affect the y value of my graph. So the first thing I want to, if whatever A is, I'm going to take that y value, which I only have two y values, negative one and one, really. And I'm going to multiply by A. Then, after that, I would add whatever D is. Remember, it could be moving it up or down. That'll adjust your Y value correctly. And then what's happening here in the parentheses is going to adjust your X value. That's your asymptotes, basically. So, it, remember, with your secant graph, you have three asymptotes going on. You have one over at negative pi over 2, one at pi over 2, and then one at 3 pi over 2. Okay, the entire period is two full pi's, but it's broken up like that, one pi apart, basically. So to find out your asymptotes, I'm going to take the bx minus, six, minus c and, and set it equal to each of the asymptote values. And that'll give me my new asymptote. Now with cosecant, it's much the same. The a and the d are going to affect the y values on your graph, the amplitude and then any vertical shift. So you're going to take the y values and multiply by a. It could be reflecting it, it could be um, just stretching out the amplitude. And then you add or subtract whatever d is, and that'll create your new y values of your graph. The shape will remain the same. Now with cosecant, this one had three asymptotes as well. It had one at 0, it had one at pi, and it has one at 2 pi. Okay. So just like before, you're going to take bx minus c, set it equal to each one of those asymptote values to find the new asymptote. Like I said before, some of you may just want to find that first asymptote and then add a full pi, then add another full pi to create your other two asymptotes. Whatever method you use, you still have to show the three different asymptotes and their values. All right, let's try this. All right, so I'm going to graph one period determine the period labeled the asymptote. So the first thing I want to notice is my, I have an amplitude of 2. So my y values, I'm going to multiply by 2. Well, my y values are basically 1, and if I multiply those by 2, it's going to be a positive 2 and then a negative 2. Just keeping that in mind, it's going to make a bigger gap between the scoops. That's what's going to happen with cosecant here. All right, um, I don't have a d value. I don't have, b is just 1. So that means 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. So that's not changing. Got to create my new asymptotes. Remember, the furthest left asymptote is at 0. So I'm going to take bx minus c, set it equal to 0, and solve it for x. That just means x is going to be at negative pi over 4. Okay, so there's my first asymptote. The next one, the second asymptote for... Um, Cosecant was, remember, it's at pi. So if I subtract pi over 4 from both sides, this is 4 pi over 4, that's going to leave x at 3 pi over 4. I need to label this. Sorry. So here's another asymptote. And then the last asymptote, if you so want to, x plus pi over 4 equals 2 pi. I'm going to subtract pi over 4 from both sides. But if 4 is my denominator, then it becomes 8 pi over 4. So this will then be 7 pi over 4. And there's that third asymptote. Now I can put in my scoops, all right? Remember, the first scoop scoops up, but my y value has now changed to a 2. So it's going to scoop up here, and then it's going to scoop down in the second, between the sec second and third asymptote. So notice something. If the, alto the amplitude is changing, look, the space between the scoops is switching, or it's being stretched out. That's what I should say. Since the 2 is being doubled, that space is being doubled. So just keep that in mind. It's a little different with the scoops. So just keep that in mind as you go. So my vertical asymptotes are at negative pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 
and 7 pi over 4. All right, let's try another one. Here's a secant one. All right, determine period, label the asymptote. A, negative 1 half, so that means my y values I'm going to multiply by negative 1 half. So if this is 1, negative 1, negative 1 half. So it's going to reflect my graph. Just keep that in mind when we get down to doing that. Let's take care of period. B is 2, so it means 2 pi divided by 2, which means the period now is pi. All right, and then the bx minus c, then that's this whole thing. You set those equal to your different asymptotes. Now remember, the first asymptote for um, secant is at negative pi over 2. So that's the parent function, the first asymptote on the left. If I apply this, this is just 2x. There is no c in this equation, so it's just 2x equals negative pi over 2. You can solve it different ways. If I cross multiply, I get 4x equals negative pi divided by 4. So the first asymptote is going to be at negative pi over 4. pi over 4. The next one is going to be at um, positive pi over 2. So if I do the same thing again, I get 4x equals pi. It's just positive now. So the next one is at pi over 4. And then the last asymptote, if you recall, was at 3 pi over 2. So I'll put that over 1 and cross multiply again. I get 4x equals 3 pi divided by 4. And there's that third asymptote. So the distance between negative pi over 4 to positive 3 pi over 2, that's a whole pi, which is what the period should be. So let's just write these in, the different asymptotes that we found. Now let's apply the scoops. So remember, with secant, it scoops up first, and it scoops right at the axis. But remember, our y value is no longer a 1. We had to multiply it by the negative 1 half. So what that 1 times negative 1 half makes it, means it's going to scoop down. The negative is going to flip it. Okay, And the one that was at negative 1 times the negative 1 half makes it positive 1 half. Oops, I'm sorry, this should be positive 1 half. So I scoop this up. And that is my reflected graph with my new asymptote. One more example for you, another secant graph. All right, let's look. A is 1, so nothing's changing with my y values. B is pi over 2, so let's talk about our period. 2 pi over pi over 2. I've got to do keep it, change it, flip it. Pi's will cancel, and the period is 4. All right. Now, there is no C. The C would occur within those parentheses, so there is no C. So if my C is 0, my D is a negative 1. So my Y values, I'm going to subtract 1 from it. I'm not multiplying it by anything. I'm just subtracting 1. So just keep that in mind. Normally, Y is at 1, so now my Y is going to be at 0. Other Y would be negative 1. If I subtract 1, that gives it negative 2. So it's just vertically moving me down one point. That'll be coming up here in a little bit. Let's take care of our asymptotes. All right, with secant, where's your first asymptote? Well, it's at negative pi over 2. So I take bx minus c, and c is 0, so I'm just going to set it equal to this, and cross multiply to solve for x. So I get negative 2 pi equals 2 pi x. Solving for x, so I'm going to divide by 2 pi. So x is negative 1. There you have it. The second asymptote in the secant would be at positive pi over 2. So let's just walk through it again. So this 2 pi equals 2 pi x divided by 2 pi. x is a positive 1. So my new asymptote here is at positive 1. So I have one at negative 1, positive 1. And you might be able to predict the next one. Pi x over 2 equals 3 pi over 2. I get 2 pi x equals 6 pi 
divided by 2 pi, x is going to be 3. All right, so now my asymptotes are set. I just now need to do the scoops with secant. Remember, the scoop will um, straddle the axis here. Normally, it's at 1. But because I have a vertical shift down, it's moving me down 1. Okay. Still opening up, just moving down 1. And the one that moved, scooped, or opened down gets moved down 1 as well. So now it's at negative 2. So make sure you're labeling your x-axis and your y-axis to show all the changes indicated. All right, try this one on your own for the whisk. Find the period, find the vertical asymptotes. Sketch it out, and we'll talk about it in class if you got it right.